Hi, this is Stephen Brown from Wright Valley Community College. This is for CSIT 256, Computer Architecture and Assembly Language. Um, and I think the one thing I want to focus on um, this demo for is the prompting of the user for a string and um, displaying what the user had entered um, back. Um, one thing that I just want you to be mindful of is that um, getting a number from the user, we would use read int or read deck. Getting a string of characters from the user, we would use read strength. Um, and so what I what I want to do um, first <laughs> is establish the variable that's going to hold what we're going to get from the user. Um, and I do intend on prompting the user for it. And also when I echo the uh, it back to the user, I want to say um, uh, a label for what it is. Um, so one thing, I'm going to have a meaning of life prompt. And this is where um, I'm going to uh, basically say to the user, um, please enter the meaning of life. Now, later when I display it, uh, I'm going to want a meaning of life label for displaying what the meaning of, of life is. Um, meaning of life label, byte, uh, meaning of life you entered is. These are both null terminated strings. What I'm going to need is a variable to hold the meaning of life. In other words, the string of character uh, characters that the user is going to um, enter. Um, well, I'll use meaning of life for the name of the variable. Um, strings um, in um, assembly is just a sequence of bytes. Um, what I would need to do for establishing uh, what the user is going to enter um, what we're going to, and let me just put in the um, um, the shell, blank dupe zero. Um, if I look back up here, I'm sorry, when this array was declared, um, we had 12 in front of dupe zero, and that gave us an array of 12 zeros. We want to do the same thing in terms of our string. And so what this is going to be is whatever our number is, dupe zero. Now the zero is, remember the null terminated string? That's a null. So we're going to fill the string with nulls. And the length of the string, we're going to have to figure out well how, how many characters the user may enter. And um, just for silliness, I'm going to put 50 characters as uh, being what the user will enter. And so I'll say here, so um, hold the meaning of life. Okay. Um, for the stuff that was here previously, um, let me comment that out as well. So let me um, pull out, sorry, there's the load display array. Um, let me just comment this out for right now. Um, the um call display at the end um let me comment that out and then the code that was in, entered here for generating the uh random numbers let me comment that out as well um these are just prior demos um what i if we were in the classroom um i would at the end of the evening load the demo file that i worked on up into canvas um, that's if I'm doing a live demo where I'm writing code as I'm going. Um, so this is kind of what I would do in class is when I'm done with this demo that I'm writing, I'll load it into Canvas. Some other weeks what you'll see is multiple files attached to Canvas already, and those are the ones that I would demo in class. So actually looking ahead to Chapter 6, there already is a demo there for the conditional processing, um, and that is something in class I would open and then talk about. So later in Chapter 6, 
there will be a video um, for that. Okay, so um, what I want to do is, well, let me just do as a comment right now. Comment, let me prompt user for meaning of life. And then I want to display back to the user, display back to user, the meaning of life they entered. And I, I'm going to do is let me do the latter part um, first. So if I were displaying that meaning of life and its label, I would need to load into EDX the offset of ah, I forgot the offset of the meaning of life label. Whoop, whoop. Okay. The offset of the meaning of life label. Um, call right string okay and so this is going to uh, display the meaning of life label on the screen the other thing I want to do is I want to actually display the meaning of life um, uh, the variable the value um, which I haven't yet prompted the user for, so what happened, this should come out as being empty right now. Um, and so now if I do a call right string, then this should display the meaning of life. Now, remember, the right string is like system that out that print in uh, Java. So if I want to advance the cursor to the beginning of the next line, I'll need to do a carriage return uh, line feed. And by the way, carriage return and line feed are two different characters in the ASCII set. What a carriage return does is it takes the cursor and moves it to the beginning of the line. What the line feed does is it moves the cursor to the next line. So carriage return line feed moves the cursor to the beginning of the next line. Um, that's what those two things are. And it's uh, the ASCII codes are 10 and 13. Um, and so that, um, and there's demos in the book where he embedded it into strings that we're displaying, um, but we're not doing that here. So all, of, all I'm doing here at the very end, so what this program right now should do um, is just display the meaning of life you entered is, and there's nothing there because I didn't prompt the user yet. Um, so I just wanted to get that piece in. Now let me focus on getting from the user um, the meaning of life. Uh, and one thing is we want to do that prompt, meaning of life prompt. So what I want to do, whoops, I went too far. What I want to do, okay, is I want to move to EDX the offset of meaning of life prompt and uh, call. Right string, so display the prompt to the user. Okay, um, this is the hard part. <laughs> okay, uh, um, and one thing I do want to point out is that in oh I'm not ready to point this out. Hang on a second. Sorry, there there, there is another video. Actually, there isn't yet. There will be another video that goes over <clears throat> the um, uh, addendum that's up there for the Irvine Library, um, but this is the link to that addendum. And then here, um, oops, here, <clears throat> um, this addendum, one thing it does is it will show um, what inputs and what outputs that a procedure has. So if I look at read string, um, two inputs that it needs is EDX needs the offset of the string that's going to receive the string, and ECX needs the length of the string that's going to receive um, uh, uh, the string of characters from the user. Um, so um, I want to load into EDX the offset of, well, it's the meaning of life, or the, the thing that we are going to load here is the meaning of life and so edx i'm going to load with the offset 
of the meaning of life. So load edx with offset of string to whole data. Okay, and then ECX is going to be the length of the string. Well, it's it's basically going to be similar, except it'll be the ECX and it'll be length of. Okay, so load the length of the string. By the way, something that the author is not consistent on within the chapter itself is whether or not we should load one less than what the string is so that we are guaranteed the uh, null termination at the end or not. And I believe it was the older libraries didn't take into consideration that, and so you had to use one less. And the newer version of the library, I think, does take uh, care of it. Um, but I'm just covering my butt um, that if you enter 50 characters, it might not work, and um, I, I, I blame an inconsistency in the book. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, so we're going to load in the ECX, the length of um, uh, the string that's going to hold uh, the data. Then we can call read string. And so what happens is, now, now let's just do a comparison for a second. Read int and read deck, there's no setup. We just call read int or read deck. And after we call read int or read deck, EAX has the value that the user entered. Read string, we have to do the setup. So we actually have to load EDX with the address of the string. We have to load ECX with the length of the string. But after read string is over, then memory will be loaded. So I'll say the string entered by the user will be in... Um, meaning of life, okay? But a little aside, this EAX, and um, this, by the way, is sort of a, something that the operating system will leave behind. Um, it's going to overlay EAX. So if you had something important in EAX, it's now gone. So note the number of characters. The user entered is in EAX. Um, so in the old days, um, in the old days there were some languages where um, the length of the string was held in a separate byte, and strings can only be 255 characters long. Um, I'll just leave it at that. If I did this correctly, and of course I'm talking and coding, which is a dangerous thing. If I did this correctly, um, oh, I didn't have, um, <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry, this is driving me crazy. I got to make sure I put in here for the prompt, um, please enter the meaning of life, colon, space. Okay, <laughs> let's just do this again. And um, so build run so enter the meaning of life just one thing the meaning of life you entered is just one thing um by the way that is from the movie city slickers that was curly um shut up brower move on okay so um the net effect is that we got the data from the user and we displayed it back the difference is that read string requires setup so read int and read deck do not require setup, but then what you have to do is take the, uh, the value that's returned and then store it to memory. Read string has setup, but then after it, you don't have to do anything because it already got put into uh, memory. Now, I'm not doing anything here with the EAX, so I'm ignoring the number of characters um, that, that were entered. Um, okay, that's read string.